all through school I was bullied. I can remember being pushed, shoved, even hit in primary school. And of course the teachers try and stop it, but you can't change someone um, just by saying a few choice words. Well, when I came here, I had no confidence. Um, I hid in my own little corner, wouldn't talk to no one, wouldn't look at no one, just in case they started a conversation with me. I don't think I needed like any extra support because it's things that I done, not what the school done. Um, like the school absolutely brilliant for me, and um, if I'd actually taken the opportunity to listen to them, I don't think I'd be kicked out. Yeah, I think you. I think I have been given the best opportunity that I to achieve in life, but I just haven't used it properly. <laughs> School should be stricter because, at the moment, people have no interest in going into education, and. The schools do nothing. If a student walks out of the class, they ignore that student. I think they should have a harsher punishment system. Well, um, obviously, schools nowadays especially have always been focused around the academic, and you, they kind of draw away from life skills, like they're only teaching you to pass an exam. They're not teaching you to live. I feel let down quite a bit because there's nothing out there. And I used to live in Reading, and when I was little, there was loads and loads of things out there. And like, as I've grown up over the years, I've just seen it all fade away. Uh, there isn't much to do, and that probably is the reason for the riots, because people assuming because a riot started because someone has to do something stupid, they take it as an excuse to relieve boredom and stress by going and, well, basically ruining other people's lives by destroying properties, they're stealing stuff from shops, which people's livelihoods, their money, their business, everything. And I think it would all actually, it would solve a lot, actually, if the government was to bring in more for young people to do because at the moment there is just not enough for young people to do. Well, I just think that the government have let me, my family down. You know, we have no money. I have personally haven't got the funds to go out further afield and look for work. I don't have the opportunities to go out for work. I used to, I applied for a, something called an, uh, it was a six month contract through the job centre. Um, which would have got me some work experience and a bit of money to go with it, and they've stopped that. They've stopped EMA, so if I were to go to college, I'd be paying all of that off my own back. I just don't see that the government are doing enough to help. To be honest, they're not really old enough to know much about what their government's doing for them, so they can't really be angry for them, because the government does a lot for them anyway, and they try and do a lot for them. and. They're too young to see it, really. I feel really lucky being at Ambiers because I'm getting absolutely amazing support, and there's staff here as, as well as the manager, as I mentioned before. They've they've put in place things that I've never had in my life before, like a mother figure or father figure, and they've really helped me so much, and they've helped me explore myself as such, address my issues, and they really have like they helped me with things like hygiene and cooking and ironing, for things I'd do when I was living on my own as such. And it's just such an amazing opportunity to be at Amber. It's just fulfilling and I can bring out my potential at Amber as well. I struggled very much at school because I suffered from learning difficulties and I went to a mainstream school and I really suffered because I was behind. And I got kept on, I got moved back a year and basically that didn't work for me. So they, I got state, statemented and I got sent to a special needs school and that's where I studied my GCSEs. And my behaviour was very bad at the mainstream school. I got, I got into drinking. I was mixing with others that I shouldn't be really. I was smoking at the, at the age of 14 and it just went downhill from then. I became homeless at the age of 15, just sofa surfing. And I felt neglected, so I, I got, got more into crime. Like I started carrying weapons and stuff like that. Basically a cry for help. I, I, I'd be honest with you, I did want the attention because I wasn't, my mum and dad, just let me go sort of thing. Uh, school was quite challenging for me. 
I got picked on quite a lot when I was younger for being small and skinny. Uh, I, I didn't get along with my teachers, so I ended up skiving, started smoking, doing drugs, and then left when I was about 15, just before my GCSEs. I think the only thing I regret is being around drugs in the first place because they did nearly kill me and and I wish I'd never gone down that path. When I was in prison, I was sitting in my cell one day with my cellmate and he, I, I spoke about my life to him and he said to me, you could have an alcohol problem. And I said to him, nah, sure you're not. And then I spoke to a, a um, prison officer because I was, I was on a detox wing for alcohol and um, that's when I got to the bottom of it that I have really got a problem. And I addressed it in prison. I was sober in prison. And I came out and thought to myself, I want to change my life. I want to change my life, 100%. But I, I'd lost so much respect with people that people, I used to ring people up when I was in prison and tell them the same thing. I've got, I've got, to, the, I've got to the bottom of it, mum or dad, I've got to the bottom of it. No, you haven't. You're not, you're not going to change. And them to see me now would be, it would just be amazing for them just to really look at me and think he's a changed boy now. Be a wake up call.